Hey guys, so welcome back to the leadership series. This is Practical Leadership 4.6 and this is called The God Connection. Um, I was told in personal words that I would be one with God when I do the thing that gets the whole world's attention and shifts the entire game in favor of the church just before we go. And I pondered this for a few days and then I finally asked, I was like, Lord, what what does this actually mean? Because in scripture, the way I have read it, I've always been like, well, we are one with you because we chose Christ. So I wanted to know what that really meant. And um, here's what followed. Okay, I'm going to give you some verses and I'm going to tell you um, some dream elements and some reality elements. And I think you'll find it very encouraging because I think it's going to relate to you too. So Ephesians 5 wanted to be imitators of God. Therefore, be imitators of God as dear children. In the Greek, imitators is one who positively emulates or mimics one. The positive imitation of one that admires the pattern set by someone worthy of emulation, such as a mentor. God himself as the example. John 10, 30. Jesus and God are one. I and my Father are one. So one in this tense means one in the spirit or united. John 14, 6 and skipping down to 20. We are in Jesus. Jesus is in God. Jesus is in us. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. At that day, you will know that I am in the Father and you in me and I in you. In, in the Greek, is properly inside or within. 1 Corinthians 12, 13. For by one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. Greek is in, again, properly inside or within. And then one is the numeral one. So there's only like literally one, okay? Then 1 Corinthians six seventeen joined in one spirit, but he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. In is properly inside or within, and one is the numeral one. Here's a graphic that kind of defines that, the God connection. I in my Father, and you in me, and, and I in you. Joined in one spirit with him. So basically there's the crown, which is God. And then Jesus is within him. We are within Jesus and Jesus is within us. The ultimate God connection. Isaiah 10, 27. It shall come to pass in that day that his burden will be taken away from your shoulder and his yoke from your neck. And the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing oil. In the Hebrew, anointing oil is olive oil, a staple, a medicine or an ointment used as an ointment as a shield, worn on the head as a token of happiness, used by a host and applied to a guest, used as an anointing applied to a king to show the Lord has chosen them to rule over his sheep, used in the tabernacle as holy oil, the lamps that burned continuously on continuously and on the priests will be used in Ezekiel's temple in the thousand year reign in Genesis 27 28 when Isaac blessed Jacob the poetic language the fatness or the abundance of the earth was actually the literal word of anointing oil in the Hebrew and they call this in some translations the dew of heaven so this is all the same word, fatness, abundance of the earth, dew of heaven, and anointing oil. Now, as an FYI, if you have ever read um, Luke 7.47 and wondered why Jesus was a little offended that the priest did not anoint him, it was probably due to this. There are several layers there. The priest did not anoint him. It would be rude of a host to not anoint a guest. Also, the priest should have known better that he was to lead the sheep and he should know that he was the king. So there were three levels there of why Jesus would be offended that the priest did not, even though someone else was putting the most expensive oil they had on him. This verse, the Isaiah 10, 27, the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing oil. This verse refers to the tribulation when those indwelled 
in Zion are attacked by the Assyrian or the Antichrist, placing them into slavery. When the Lord's anger ceases, the Lord will shift his anger to their destruction. When they are destroyed, the burden will be lifted. This verse struck me because the reason the burden will be lifted is because of the anointing oil. My team uses anointing oil regularly. We wear it as we were instructed by the Lord daily on our hands, feet, and face. Matthew 6, 17. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face so that you do not appear to be fasting, but to your father who is in the secret place and your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. So this suggests that when you're fasting, you don't want to stand out, right? But it says, anoint your head and wash your face. Why? Because those are normal behaviors that they did every day. So you don't want to look like you haven't been doing your normal tasks. You don't want anyone to know you're fasting. Okay, so to anoint in the Greek is to be at union with the oil or perfume. Literally to anoint thyself or thy head. Okay, we use it, me and my team, to pray over any ailment. We use it when we pray to cleanse our homes. When my husband was recently very sick, I used anointing oil on him and prayed over him several times before what I'm going to tell you happened. Also, before I tell you this dream and experience, note that a few months before in my time with the Lord is when I was told that I was going to do these global events and be one with the Lord. I had been praying respectfully if I could get clarification on what that meant. This verse is from when they were setting up the temple and Moses had several tasks to do, including anointing Aaron and his sons. Exodus 40, 13 to 14, and then skipping down to 16. You shall put the holy garments on Aaron and anoint him and consecrate him that he may minister to me as a priest. You shall anoint them as you anointed their father, that they may minister to me as priests. For their anointing shall surely be an everlasting priesthood throughout their generations. Thus Moses did according to all that the Lord had commanded him, so he did. Notice Moses was doing something new, never done before. He had no model but God himself. Now, I want you to understand that being one with God is a completely different thing that I could have imagined as it came upon me one night. I was having a dream and then I awoke and God directed me through what to do. Then I had another dream so I could see how it works. Let me tell you the dreams and the foretaste of what is coming because all the foundational work that has been laid in this study has to be understand and applied. And I believe to be able to instantly adapt to the next level, I was taught how to heal and how to break the chains of a massive group of people. I can guarantee you that there is no false prophet, no false healer or mocker that can duplicate what I learned. This is about God selecting you, anointing you, and working through you. And I do feel that this will be happening to more people than just me. Because in the end, after the war, the anointed and some of the faithful obedient are going to be healing people, which will require breaking of their chains. For we are the royal priesthood and we will be working on behalf of of our king. 1 Peter 2 9, but you are chosen in royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Here's the dream and experience. First, I had a dream back in early December when my husband was still quite ill, and I was being told instructions in the dream. The voice of God was booming in my dream, and in the dream, I was told how to heal. So first I was told, ask forgiveness for myself and for the person I was praying over in the dream. And I don't know who the person was I was praying over. Then it said, pray and ask to heal the person. Then I was told to visualize the source of what caused this illness within the person 
And this was done by being one in mind with God and him showing it to me. Then it happened in the dream. My mind was fully one with God. I felt literally like a faucet and water was just running through me. So you know how if you hear from God, you hear it, then you have to process it either you know, in your mind or you write it down or whatever. And then you kind of think about it and then you would go and do it, right? Well, this is not how this is. When you're one with God, the thoughts come directly into your mind and and you do it as they're given to you. Like as if you thought it yourself, as if you're thinking, I'm going to reach a spoon and stir a dish, right? Except God's thoughts are doing it. And there are thoughts that are on much grander scale. My mind was fully one with God. I literally felt like a faucet and water was just running through me. And I was the one doing it, but it was only because God's thoughts were directing it. Next, I was told, with your mind, break the thing, the source of the trouble, open it. And I was shown a not very ripe banana with no skin. And I watched it being broken directly in the center with its jagged edges all snapped in half. And this was a object lesson to teach me how to do it in the person. Then I was told to release the demons that cause the ailment. So then I located in this person's body a tic-tac shaped but larger um, black, like, I don't know what to call it, uh, thing, okay? Um, I had to mentally break it in half and it looked just like the inside of the banana, the way it was broken, okay? But all of this was done because God was thinking it and I was used as like a marionette to do it. I was, so then after I break this thing open inside this person who I don't even know who they are, then I was told to release the demons from within that broken open unit, okay? So I broke it open and I, I released the demons and interestingly I was not told to bind them or rebuke them or even send them to the pit I was just told to release them then um, in the body of the person I was going to heal and repair I was told it was imperative to make the break of the source of the problem before any healing could occur then my body was overtaken and my hands were positioned in a certain particular way in the dream and God's power was flowing through them. I was also shown a few things I had to do with my hands to bring more of the Holy Spirit into them and then release all of God's power out into the person all at once. Next in the dream, I was told to pray for my husband Jim's healing. I was shown a dark mass of goo and it was that tic-tac or good and plenty kind of shape. Um, in my mind's eye, it was roughly two inches long and maybe an inch wide. And it was very jagged and rough and gooey. It was disgusting to look at. And God's directives were in my mind. And I just followed along. Like it wasn't even me, but it was me doing it. And my mind searched all inside his body, top to bottom. And I could go through and see all his organs. I could see all his veins, his muscles. Everything was really cool. And as I'm searching inside of his body head to toe, then we, I'm going to say that because God threw me, okay, we were breaking the goo open just like that banana in the last person and the, the object lesson. We snapped it right in half and then we released the demons that were found within. It was as if I had said they needed to leave, but all of this was done with no words. I literally mentally did this through God working through me. And I feel like this is what he does to us. He searches us, finds the thing, breaks it, but none of it needs words. Because in heaven, you don't even communicate with words. You don't have to, you can, but you don't have to. You can just think the thought, they think the thought back at you. So it makes tons of sense to me that this is how this system works, okay? Then I was next directed with God's words to find a white object. And I was told to activate the healing. Now, when I was told this, I was given an image in my head of what it looked like. So this was sort of like a um, long, um, long oval with pointed ends and it was bright, bright, bright white. Okay. I believe this has something to do with the Holy Spirit, but I don't know that as a fact because I wasn't told what it was called or what it is. 
but I searched his body up and down looking for it and I, I found it like a little lower than his left kidney. When I found this, it was sort of like a glow stick. It was just shining tons of light, but it was real thin and real small. And then I activated it. God's thoughts went through me and just made me activate it. I had no words. And I recall in the dream thinking how cool it was to be one with God. I was like, this is really cool because I don't have to think about anything. It's just happening. And I'm just being a tool, you know, uh, then I was told some healings, including Jim, my husband's are not instantaneous and that Jim needed many, many more prayers. And I needed to enlist more people to pray and they would be applied at the end at the right time to heal him fully. Next, I was shown a broken bone of someone I don't know. And I was shown how to heal that just with my mind, with God working through me. Then I was walked through how to heal a few other ailments. Then the dream went back to Jim, my husband, and I woke up. When I woke, my hands were in a particular position that, that God had already placed in the dream. And I can't talk about all that, but God's power is flowing through them in real time, just like the dream. But I was fully awake at this point. I'm looking around the room thinking, whoa, I'm actually awake. God's mind was still active in my mind and he was directing my body and my thoughts. And I was guided step by step to literally do what was in my dream and go through Jim's body, find the black gross thing, break it open, release the demons, find the shiny thing and activate it. And then um, step by step, I was just a conduit of God's power and God's working. Like it was, it was incredible. Okay. So then I was told that the healing was, again, it was reinforced that the healing was going to take a while, but that he was healed because God sees the end. Like he sees we are raptured, right? It, it's already going to happen. So he knows the date that it's going to happen, that he is healed. It's just that ever, all the prayers and all the things that we just did together on his body would not be fully applied until later because this healing takes a while. Now, my body was just flowing with God's power. And it was a very long time after this. Like it was hours and hours later, I woke up and it was still flowing through me. Like it was a lot of energy. Okay. Now, all the healing in my dream and then in reality included that scanning of the interior of the body for hidden demonically filled source. I mean, we're talking broken bone, the whole deal, everything. So I had to find the internal and healing element, remove the demons, activate the healing. I was told that some only need spiritual healing. They do not have a physical issue, but a similar process occurs for spiritual healing because it's a demonic influence that has caused them to stall out or to become unhealthy in their spirit or not allow God in their spirit. So the bright yellow glow stick type of thing that was, you know, kind of near his kidney, that was what needs to be activated in each person in order to have their spirit healed. And that had more spiritual power than the demonic little Tic Tac thing had of any demon or any illness that can supersede everything else that exists. So I drifted back to sleep. Because it's like, you know, one or two in the morning. I don't know. Drifted back to sleep. And in the dream, again, I was doing a miracle. So this time I was over a large group of people. I was above them. So I was either flying or was standing on a really high platform. Because I was up over them. And it was a massive group of people. Like 50 to 100,000 people. A ton of people. Okay. And the world was mocking me very meanly as I was doing this and it didn't even phase me. I was just like, whatever. I, I actually felt really sad for them because by mocking me, they were sealing their fate that they had to stay for the tribulation. And I felt really compassionate about that. Like that stinks for you. That's going to be real bad. That's a bad choice. And, um, some of those people would be possibly going to hell forever just because they were going against God's anointed. So I felt really bad for them. And I just tuned them out. Like I didn't even care what they were saying, but it was very mean spirited what they were doing. And like in my body now, if I wasn't like 
already transformed, it would probably intimidate me on some level because I would be like, what, why are you saying that to me, you know? So in this dream, I healed the entire group of people, okay? And then immediately after that, I got word that the little pastor at the little church that's very broken that I attend and pray over, um, and I've been told that I'm gonna help them in the end times, um, the little pastor at this church, he wanted to schedule a meeting with me and I had a knowing that he wanted to talk about my spiritual health because he thought I used witchcraft to heal people. But I don't know why that would even exist, but let's go with it. That's what the dream said. He, th he was like, oh, I'm going to have to talk to her because she's using witchcraft. And I didn't even want to go, but I decided to go in the dream. And um, he wondered how I knew how to heal people. And I had a knowing in the dream. He really felt, felt that it was witchcraft because he's cessationist. And he was going to sternly correct me. I had a knowing that he had intention to do that. But I didn't answer him. Because I knew a true Christian in sync with the Lord would know that only God could heal a group of people like that. All at once. So I laid into him with all that was wrong with that church. And um, I railed him. I told him all these things. And he was sitting there just taking it, right? And shocked that I was saying it all. And then he had a knowing at the end, after I was done railing him, that I was actually from the Lord because he knew all those things were true. He was convicted by every single one. And then he turned to me and he said, you're from the Lord. And he was surprised. And that was the end of the dream. So then I had a third dream. And in this dream, I was standing on the platform at Walt Disney World. It's above... The, it's above where the train station is and you can look down Main Street and you can see the castle and there were another 50 to 100,000 people. They were all packed between the castle and where I was standing and they were giving me attention. I don't know why, but they were all looking at me and the people were packed shoulder to shoulder as close as humanly possible. Like I would die. I'd be so uncomfortable, but they were that close and they were all staring at me. And I was breaking spiritual chains off of them so they could hear the gospel. Then as I did this, they were, it was the same thing. I saw a black thing inside of them and I broke it. And then I activated this light piece inside of them. And instantly all of them, their chains were broken so they could hear the gospel at, in one like second, boom, all of them at once. Then I was directed with that God is directing me and I'm just like a conduit with that voice. God directed me to, to apply holy oil over their heads, every single one of them. And what happened is, cause I'm not running the show. I was just a conduit. What happened is there was a virtual anointing and in the virtual anointing, I could see, but they couldn't see, but I could see oil coming down on their heads and running all over their faces and that was God's anointing to them that they were going to be saved and um but the whole thing was done with my mind like I triggered them to be healed and I triggered them to be anointed just with a thought that God had worked through me so um it was exactly the same process as healing someone, like searching for the different things in the body, but I could do it simultaneously to the entire group. It was really cool. Okay, so here's some things I wanna reinforce because if this happens to you, the more you hear it on this side, the easier it's gonna be, okay? So some things I recall. It was important in each healing or miracle to ask forgiveness for myself and then for each person I healed. It was also important to not touch the people I healed. Everything was done with the eyes and the mind. All was done in the mind with being one with God and with vis visualization being directed real time by God. I could not initiate this. This was not anything of my source. I would have to literally ask that the Lord grant healing the breaking and releasing of the source of trouble with the demons within had to occur. The finding of the healing glowing element had to be set to work. 
then the healing was always at the source of the issue. Spiritual healing was given after the physical healing. So there's a physical healing if needed and then spiritual healing. After spiritual healing, I did a virtual anointing over them. And lastly, all of this could be done as pre-healing. And then the prayers collected and stored for being applied at the right time. I was told that I would have missions upcoming that I'm going to go over a group of people and do a virtual pre-heal and a virtual anointing so that when the time comes and everyone's going to be changed, they will instantly be able to be changed because the process has already occurred over them. That's amazing. Okay. Um, I was also instructed at this time that prayers are always collected and gathered and then applied at the right time. And this blew my mind because we're so impatient. We pray for something we want it to happen right now. And it occurred to me some things I've prayed for 10 years, maybe, you know, and then I'm thinking, I wonder if I've had to pray it for 10 years because I'm the only one on the job. You know, like maybe it's more of us, the more that pray the faster that thing happens or something. So, um, but I don't know. That's just how I feel about it. It might be wrong, but all I do know is you can trust that when the Lord releases you from the burden to pray, it is done and it will be applied at the proper time. He knows the proper time and we just need to roll with that, whatever that is. Okay. So as you can see, this is like super next level stuff, right? I've never heard of anything like this. Um, this is nothing we can do on our own, but it is something we can look forward to as leaders. I do believe that God is going to work through all the leaders this way and we can be his conduit. I mean, how amazing, right? Every, he's going to direct every single step until the church actually starts functioning the way it's supposed to function. So we can bring in the full measure, of all the sheep that belong to him. Um, I believe this is how he will lead all to hear and to obey him. A notable observation is that every source of physical or spiritual illness is from a demonic source. Why? Back to the beginning of this study. If every good and perfect thing is from God, then every bad and awful disease, malfunctioning thing, person, body, spirit, negatively impacted, anything is from a demonic source. It has to be. The apostles were clearly told to use anointing oil also to heal the sick. I want you to see that. And they cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and healed them. In the Greek, this oil is to be at union with oil or perfume, literally to anoint thyself on the head. I need to point out there's there are other words that are used for anoint that are sometimes used in the New Testament. So John 9, 6 when he had said these things, he spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. So that anointed is to spread anything, to anoint or rub anything on anything. Luke 4, 8. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind to release the oppressed. So in this use of anointed, it's talking about God anointing Jesus to anoint or smear with oil to consecrate one in a religious office and furnishing for the needed dynamic powers for its administration. Also used of anointing Christians with the Holy Spirit in 2 Corinthians 1, 2, it points out that God does the anointing of this type and the Holy Spirit is the guarantee. So those with the Holy Spirit who have the ability to do all the things we're talking about, fight in the Spirit, right? Those people have been anointed in the general Christian anointing that gives them the Holy Spirit and power to do this. So I believe in the third dream where I was doing the virtual anointing over all those people at Disney World and they had a virtual like anointing oil falling down them that they didn't sense or see, but... I could see, okay? That, I believe, is this type of anointing, to become a Christian and receive the Holy Spirit. So I think that's basically what's happening when people receive the Holy Spirit and they might feel something when they become a Christian. They're getting virtually anointed, 
Okay, for those that are like me that are called anointed in all of the prophecies, and God has told me and others that we not only are anointed here, but we will be anointed in heaven, in his throne room, with a heavenly anointing, because we are leading, okay? At that time, we are given new bodies, supernatural tools, everything we need to function, okay? I do believe that is a different kind of anointing. And there are some people here who have even talked to me and they're like, well, you know, my pastor said I'm anointed, so blah, blah, blah. I don't think that that makes you in the category of anointed necessarily. God's the one who does the anointing. Okay, so if you are like, I'm anointed because whoever said so, and I'm going to go in the first round, and then you don't go in the first round, that's why. Your motivation should be to pray more. Because there is massive power in prayer that we don't even kind of understand, honestly. But perhaps in our microwave fast food generation, we have unrealistic expectations of how this all goes, right? All I can say is pray more, pray strong, pray confidently in all full faith what you're praying. Pray often as much as you can. Multitask as often as possible. You could sing, you can cook. You can do tons of things and pray. Okay, I do it all the time. It's multitasking. It's not that difficult. I have a harder time when there's a lot of chaos. Like a lot of people are talking in the room. I'm cooking and I'm trying to pray, but I can still do it. Okay, you can do this. <laughs> um, just keep praying for whatever you're convicted to pray for, whatever you're told to pray for, whatever mission you're on, whatever people are in front of you, do that until the burden is lifted. Then know it's taken care of. It may not be taken care of in front of your eyes, but it is taken care of. Um, we are being trained right now to confidently pray away TMS and to break chains and soften people's hearts. They're like little baby steps that need to occur, right? So that in the next phase, when we are run fully by God's mind and we are a conduit for him, we can effectively follow along and do the next part. Why do I say this? I've done so much on the spiritual warfare that in literal life, okay, that it was nothing for me to expect the demons to leave when I did the healing in my real husband's life. Like I was like, oh yeah, of course they're gonna leave because I knew God had that power, right? But if you haven't done the baby steps and you're not following along and doing the small things, being faithful in small things with spiritual warfare, and then you're, you're never gonna be expected to do these kinds of things because you won't have the faith to pull it off because it takes 100% faith in God that he's doing exactly what you're um, experiencing, okay? Now, um, there's going to be some people who might see this and be like, that's a little far out there. I don't, I don't really know if I agree with that. I don't know. That's not in the Bible. You know, whatever. Okay, uh, we're at war. I just want to, like, pull that out there. Every single thing that I know, I do not share online. And there's a lot more that is much deeper than this that is needed in order to functionally win this war, okay? You have to trust that not every single thing is gonna be written in the Bible. You know why? Everyone has access to that. But what you can trust is God could give you information when you confidently know God's voice versus any other voice. God can give you information and direct you so we can each be directed. And while we're each directed, we are doing what we need to do to conquer for the war. There are elements in all of this that actually make tons of sense. They parallel with scripture, but no, there's not a word like there's a black tic-tac gross thing inside somebody's body in the Bible. That's not in the Bible, okay? So you have to understand that if that were in the Bible, gosh, wouldn't it be easier for the demons to hide their stuff differently? Because now we're at end game and we're being told this because we need to fight harder than any generation has ever fought before. And my biggest desire is to be used by him. Okay. I don't care what it takes. I don't care. I don't care what the cost is. I don't care if it hurts. I don't care any of that stuff, but I can tell by comments and viewership in the stuff that I've delivered 
That's not the case with most Christians. What they want is an easy trip home. What they want is just to get out of this life because they're not really having a great time. That's not what we're called to do. We're called to fight. So if you're going to be in Fight Club and you're going to win, and you're going to take it to the demon's table and be like, mm, yeah, you're going to have to go now because I've God on my side. This is for you. The rest of you that want to have complaints or little comments that are weird or whatever, you can just step off now because you're not going to make it. We'll come rescue you, but you're not going to make it on your own. And that's because you're on your own. You're not choosing to be in God's power. You want to be in God's power? This is what we're doing. Okay? So I know this is a lot, but it's very inspiring. I mean, I've experienced it. So for me, it is amazing. I can't wait to all of you experience it that actually have full faith. So I hope it's been an encouragement and I'll see you next time.